So we're starting on the title screen today because I want to take a look at something. I've currently used this character for, yeah, 14 hours. That's a lot of playtime to say we're only a third of the way through the game. Yeah, remember how I was saying this episode will be the end game? I was completely lying. It was a really bad ruse. But yeah, let's get into this. Uh, let's play. So yeah, I've made a few changes around here. So there's now a much better arena than that dinky little one down there. There's now all this space. And there's also this wiring going across. So if we flick this timer, these statues drop out hearts, or in this case, candy games. And these other statues drop out uh, sugar plums and other words, man, the stars. So yeah, keep us supplied with health and uh, manager in boss fights. Very nice. But we're not going to be using that arena today, because we're going to be going downstairs to the underworld again. And I also fished up all these. Yeah. To space! Except they stop there. Actually, they do hit the space layer. I left steam running. Give me a second. Okay. Just called shut down, steam is offline. Let's continue. Okay. So then, what else do we have I done? I think this happens really is new. This one's new as well. It's just growing plants. And the Wish Doctor also lives up here now. Because we can buy something for him once the uh, boss we're about to defeat is well defeated. So, let's go downstairs. But first, let's hit the watch table. And some of the rooms. Because we need to get something from down in the underworld to some of the boss that we want to kill. This fall is pretty damn long. It'd be longer if this world was larger. Also, yeah, um, that point in, I think it was, where was it, episode 3, 4? Where I questioned about me getting, about the game trying to crush me with two boulder traps. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. There's two boulders right here that were all linked to the same pressure plate. Well, two pressure plates right next to each other, but you get it, Jill. But yeah, now let's look for what we were after in the underworld here. We're looking for another type of the demon. One that's carrying something. Oops, I need my sword. So yeah, I've also replaced the beekeeper with the knight's edge. This is part of a recipe later on in the game that we are going to want. Uh, how about you? Are you carrying it? No, you're not. Okay, so I'm just going to deal with some demons for a while and we'll find the one that we were after. So I've been down here for about five minutes at this point, and I've still not found the enemy after. I thought one would have spawned by now. Like, we even put water candles down here, for fuck's sake, to increase the spawns. Well, those water candles won't help if I'm away from them. These fire imps are crap. Oh, I've got a demon scythe. Okay. Well, there's a there's a waterfall upgrade at the very least. I still haven't found the enemy I'm looking for though. Much to my annoyance. Hey, finally! It totally took 16 bloody minutes. Yeah, seriously, my audacity recording is up to 16 minutes. Right, okay, so if we kill this guy, he's gonna drop that voodoo doll he's carrying. And that voodoo doll is a lot of beloved guide. You are a terrible person. Indeed, we are a terrible person, because let me cancel this battle potion. Grab these water candles back. Well, let's heal up, because... Well, let's just say our guide is about to meet an untimely demise. Well, once we actually heal, that is. I could drink a healing potion, but I've only got one. Oh, wait, I can put this down. Aha! See you there. Just like the campfires, the heart lantern is here, which are made from chains and a life crystal. Increase your uh, life regen exponentially, and they stack with the uh, campfire. So your life regen can actually, actually go up by quite a substantial amount. But we're almost uh, fully healed. So what happens if we destroy this doll? Well, this happens. A giant wall made of flesh shows up. And this is why the bee nades, nades are what I wanted from the Queen Bee. Like, these things, they tear through the uh, hungry, which are these tentacle things here. They actually do a pretty big number on the wall of flesh itself. And then the mini shark is also good. Especially with the meteor bullets I've uh, made for it. 
So yeah, with the wall of flesh, aim for the eyes. Like, I'm not even post commentating this one, because this boss is actually really easy once you know what you're doing. But yeah, just aim for the eyes, and just have a bridge, and just backpedal log it, and you're pretty much fine. And yeah, occasionally vomits out these, uh, worm things. Yeah, you can, you can shoot him in the mouth as well, but it does less damage compared to the, uh, Eyes, because well, if you're gonna if you shoot someone, you shoot them in the eye because it hurt more. Ooh, as well, but the eyes like that anyway. So yeah, this is gonna be a turning point in the game because once this boss is dead, there's no turning back. But yeah, it gets a bit more spammy with his lasers towards the end of the fight. But I don't expect money or speed up, but it's pretty much over. Goodbye, Wall of Flesh. The Ancient Spirits of Light and Dark have been released. So, we're officially in hard mode, and that's an NPC there, but I don't have the methods to actually get him. I'll come back to the Underworld later and catch the, and rescue this guy, but yeah, for now, we'll just put my legs through. So yeah, this uh, NPC takes a lot of damage. Well, this enemy, because the Torture Soul is an enemy. Then you turn me into an NPC. But yeah, I'm going to quickly take all this, and we're going to head up back to the surface and see the check on things. Right, so let's head right. Ooh, I'm glad I put that trench there. Because yeah, there's crimson here now, and it's spreading. This is moving slowly to the left. It will corrupt all of this grass, and it will also turn... Uh, stone into crimstone. It can only spread through a four block wide gap. Or through four blocks. Like if let me rephrase that. If there's a four block wide gap, it can't go through it. So this trench will keep it out. So let's also run over to let's also let's actually let's quickly dive down the uh, elevator again. Just to see whereabouts things are along this, cause Likely this will have been hit by that uh, crimson towards the bottom of it, I assume. Yep. Because if we go up here, things have turned red. And it's playing the underground crimson music because, well, this is crimson now. There's crimstone right here. And it is, again, spreading. So yeah, this is one of the things that hard mode does. The world becomes severely damaged. Because the crimson spawns in a new place and starts to spread. Or corruption, if you got that. Things get worse. If we head to the left somewhere. The desert is flat because that's my doing. I was cutting some of it out. But yeah, uh, things have gone a bit blue down here by the meteorite. In fact, it's actually, yeah, it's actually up here is a better example. So yeah, uh, things have gone blue. This is this is called the Haller. This is a new evil biome that we've got in here. And just like the crimson, it also spreads. And it's full of pixies and unicorns, which try to murder you. And as you can see, our weapons are now a lot weaker. Because these guys are a lot stronger. I'm going to take the rest of this out at some point. Ah, oh, whatever. So, we're essentially starting the game all over again. So, we will want to have this, because we, if you read it, strong enough to destroy Demon Autos. You remember in a previous episode, I smacked a Demon Auto with the hammer, lost half my health? Yeah, no more. We can break him with that hammer. But first, let's fill our inventory with crap. Well, let's actually quick step what we've got so far. Uh, let's see here, where does this stuff go? This should go in magic weapons, inventory, management time. That's good, we'll do that there. For now, let's just open all these. So the crimson crate. Excellent, excellent. So far, so good. Golden crates. Nice. So what we're doing here is, well, we're opening boxes. You can fish these up out of the water, and when you open them, they give you loot. It's best to always save these for hard mode, because they give you hard mode doors. These spawn much... well, well, we'll get on to spawning them in a minute. Which is why I'm going to grab some platforms. 
Uh, what are they? They're in wooden, wooden blocks. Grab a couple platforms. Oh, there we go. And let's also grab a chest. Furniture. Ooh, while it's night time, we need to chat with the witch doctor. Because I've put him up there for a reason. Because if we go up here, if we talk to him, he sells leaf wings, allow flight and slow fall. So if we buy that, let's get rid of the, the balloon, or at least put it in the accessory slot. Because we can just fly. We don't need the rocket boots. We can we'll flat out fly. We. We don't really want to be up in space though, because that'll get kind of deadly if we are. Okay, so let's put a chest just up here. And let's put these in it. Two, three, four, five, six. Anything else we want to put in there? Nope. Okay, so now let's just throw a little shit on the floor. Let's put this over here. Lead can go there. There. Looks like into my chests. Zealous anchor. This is a melee weapon. We. I don't actually like it. It's strong, but I don't like it because of the fact that. Well, it kind of behaves like a flail, and I don't like flail based weapons. And yeah, here's the biggest problem with the start of hard mode. Inventory management becomes a pain, especially if you've opened a lot of crates. Uh, wait, healing potions have their own chest. We'll get onto these souls of night later on. Put this bit away. We'll put the sorcerer of them on the accessory slot for now. That's not too useful because I'm not a sorcerer. Few more. Let's sort some extra hard mode ores. The thing is, I don't know which of the hard mode ores we actually have in the world. Because there's, as like with the main ores, there's three tiers, two of each, and you can have either of them. So, like, I could have Cobalt, Mithril, and Adamantite, or I could have any of those. It's completely random. So let's sell some of these sailfish boots, because they're just uh, reskins of the Hermes boots, which we have better ones of anyway. Uh, let's see. Oh, well, all that can go in the new chest. As can the lead can go in here as well. So it's some more. Titanium, tsunami in a bottle. That's a uh, another double jump. Again, we don't need that anymore, so we can sell them. So yeah, this is going to be kind of a slow going start, but now that I know that I'm pretty much safe, uh, I'm going to quickly check the crumbs again, just to make sure I am actually safe from it. This trench should keep it out. I don't see why it won't. But I might want to line the top of it with wood. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's budged a little bit. So yeah, it is creeping. I am slightly worried this trench ain't gonna keep it out. Well, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. If we ever do, which we hopefully won't. Okay. And that I all. You all there. Hello, giant eyeball. Get rid of you quickly. So yeah, the Night's Edge, which was tearing things apart earlier, is now kind of weak. Uh, let's see here. Is there any more hardwood ores? Yes, there's some titanium ore there. Is that actually enough for. Hang on a second, that might be enough for something. No, it isn't. Okay. Well, I tried. The health forge back down because we can upgrade the health forge, but we need to use some hardware else to do it. So let's finish doing this horrible inventory management. Nope. Why not? I hear I keep pulling torch off the floor. My recording of this is already running to 30 minutes, it's that's definitely going to get cut down. Uh, potions, obsidian skin, banners. If I'd have made this storage room a bit bigger, I could have put uh, item frames to show the uh, what the chest held, but I don't know where Right, we can just sell some of this stuff. Hey, time keep. You want this, you want this, you want this, you want this, you want this. Yeah, that's good. 
Actually, you can have the ginger beer as well, I'm not going to worry. Uh, enemy drops. These are enemy drops. We'll go to those later. Let's sell that anchor as well. I'm not going to use it. And we'll get onto these souls later, as I already said, but let's throw them into a chest. And we'll make a souls chest, because we're going to get multiple of those throughout the hard mode. So we'll put those in there. Right then, where was the original crimson? Over here. So let's go break some demon ores. That's our next step of progression. Looks like I can figure out how to get stuck and get off a wall. So yeah, um, sand, stone, grass and ice can all be uh, corrupted by crimson and hallow. Regular snow can't, thank god, so there is at least a kind of natural barrier on the surface here. But yeah, this crimson can now go off to the right. So in fact, I think, unless it's going to be blocked by the, uh, by some of the surface again, like, is this desert? Okay, no, it has been kind of blocked. That's fine. So it's at least been kind of contained by the snow biome. Hi, I was telling I can not deal with you right now. Yeah, like, my summons are doing one damage. So yeah, there's now a slime in the crimson. Typical. We are a new enemy. Put a slime in. So yeah, this bullet, these bullets are now doing like one damage. I'm actually going to get rid of the imp. Well, it's kind of throwing me off. You're going to just go away there, Rev? Okay, bye. So yeah, Palladium, Mithril. Let's also get up here. So when you break a demon altar, it spawns the hard modes on your world, and it also sends some uh, refs after you. So let's deal with them quickly. So that one seems to be stuck down there. And apparently that one is as well, okay. I'm not complaining. They're not hard to fight, they're just kind of annoying. Okay, what do we got? Titanium. Palladium, and yeah, they just loops around. So we want to break quite a few of these. Because by breaking quite a few of these, we get more raw deposits. But yeah, as you can see from me breaking a lot of them, I've got kind of a rare army on me. So yeah, the Souls of Night, if we kill an enemy in the underground crimson, it doesn't matter what enemy it is, just as long as it's an enemy. It has a chance of dropping a Soul of Night, which can be used for some crafting, and likewise the underground tower will drop Souls of Light. Souls become kind of a big thing in this in the latter half of this game. I'd say I'd say latter third. No, latter two thirds. Because I'd say we're only a third of the way through the game at this point. So yeah, we've got new enemies. Ice tortoises, floaty grosses, the giant bats, the these hurtlings. Yeah, there's a lot of new stuff to take in, in hard mode. It's like you're starting a whole new game. So yeah, I want to get to these always. Let's not do it that way, let's just go from beneath. So yeah. Priority one will be upgrading weapons and tools. Because currently we're kinda weak. Uh, can we do another cycle of them? I'd kind of like to get this uh, sort of thing out of the way before these wraiths become a problem. I'm not sure that's happening now. Okay, there we go. Uh, drop down. Kill these off. Any more demon orders down here? Bound wizard. Okay, can we find him? Because that's an NPC. Oh, he's apparently not down, he's apparently up. Is he up here somewhere? Oh, he's there. Hello, wizard. How are you doing? So yeah, this is a new NPC. And he also sells some stuff. Nothing I really want. Actually, I'll go by the crystal ball. We might also die here. Because tortoises... There's two types. There's the ice tortoise and there's a the jungle tortoise. And they are both a pain in the ass. So yeah, let's break a few more orders. And yeah, these can also spawn uh, random patches of Crimson or Hallow in the world. I think they're always down in, in the underground though, so I'd have to worry about them to my base and them going evil. Like, I I can actually drop the uh, Hallow down, because the Hallow is actually the better option of the two. Crimson NPCs will be like, nope, I ain't living here, and they'll just up and leave. Whereas the Hallow, they're all, yep, in fact, the Dryad even gives you seeds to make the Hallow. So we might do that if things start to become a bit dire. But yeah, let's 
Ow, let's use the right hammer for a start. Break these altars. And let's get the fuck out of here. So we also got a map. That's a part of a uh, part of something for the shield. A very long preference. But we might go do it actually, because it might be fun to have a, a few end goals of some hard high tier gear. Let's get a load of money. Let's throw this crystal ball down, which so if we tap that, magic powers are increased. Very nice. Let's add some stuff. Put these in accessories, whatever the hell that is. Accessories. There it is. So yeah, things are going to become a bit of a mess while we uh, scramble to deal with all this. I should probably get rid of those vines. I think those vines can actually cause uh, crimson to spread, which might be a problem. You know what, I'm not going to take a chance. I'm just going to plant some hallow here. Because with the NPCs, they really won't be any enemies unless there's a blood moon or something worse. Uh, where did I put the dryad? Here she is. She keeps trying to sell you an angel staff because it's a fucking ripoff merchant. Alright then. Let's spread some ha some happy go lucky rainbows. If I can actually plant the seeds. So yeah, as I said, just like the uh, crimson, the hallow will spread. Corrupting pretty much the same types of blocks. In fact, all the same types of blocks. But it's a preferable option compared to the uh, Crimson because, again, NPCs will live there. In fact, who doesn't want their uh, base to be all happy rainbows? It's actually kind of evil, but hey. So yeah, let's just keep putting them all in this trench. Because, yeah, in my previous single player world, I didn't notice the corruption had spawned right next to me. So I was just like, la 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 la, opening chest. Oh, why is this house not valid? Oh, look, it's corrupt. Oops. Yeah, it was really frustrating. But yeah, now that we set those seeds in motion, they can do whatever the hell they want. I really don't care. Just as long as they keep the crimson out. Right then. Can we make. No, we can't make a pickaxe out of any of these, I don't think. We can make. I think we can make the anvil at the very least. We can make an anvil. So that's at least something. We can upgrade this, because we'll need this acrylium anvil for uh, the hard mode ores. Well, anything past cobalt. We can actually make a bit of adamantite, but then again, we have titanium in this world. And we do need the forge. Can I actually make a titanium pig? I can make a titanium pickaxe. Okay. See, that's why you want to. Uh... Oh, shameful. <laughs> that's why you want to fish up a load of crates, because you can skip a massive grind. Because otherwise, I'd have to be digging up loads of this ore. Like, I still have to dig up quite a bit of it, but I have to skip. I can skip cobalt and mithril completely. Because I have a uh, titanium pickaxe, which is mine of all. So let's get this reforged, because it's kind of weak right now. Massive. Agile. Yeah, we'll take agile. In fact, I'll take speed over. Uh, over size any day. There's a sex joke in there somewhere, I'm pretty certain. But okay. Now that uh, hard mode's underway, we can probably start to get some serious work done in the next episode. This, the recording for this has run to 40 minutes almost. I just heard a quack. <laughs> yeah, every so often, uh, if there's a duck around for a long period of time, every so often, rather than join quack, go quack. It's kind of funny. But yeah, this recording is up to 36 minutes and I am not editing a video that long. And half of it's waiting for the freaking voodoo demons to show up anyway, so... RNG! Woo!